I'd like to introduce you to my friend Estelle. Hello. <laughs> Estelle has her own label, Mickey in the Van, and we've just worked out, I think I've been buying pieces from Estelle for... Since it started since in 2012. In 2012. So Estelle's going to talk to us about how she's um, evolved um, and how she does her illustrations that become the fabric. And I think you'll see why um, I'm always adding little pieces into my wardrobe because it is uh, fashion and fabric and clothes that you're not going to see anywhere else. And one of the things I love most about it is that, yes, I suppose it's fashion, but it's not fashion that you change. I've still got pieces that I bought in 2012. The originals, yep. the OGs. Yep, the originals, <laughs> and I wear them, and people will still stop me and say, oh, my goodness, that's amazing. Where did you get that from? So it's not fashion that dates. So having said that, I'll pass you over to my friend Estelle and she can have a chat to you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So my name is Estelle Michaelides and as Suzanne and Evelyn said, my label is Mickey in the Van. Um, Melbourne based and also Melbourne made, which is really important for me because it's really essential that I keep my city self-sustainable as much as I can. Um, I'm also a fashion illustrator and have been really fortunate to uh, be invited around different parts of the world to do illustrations. Um, and I want to include that in my, in my work because I don't want to have limitations on what I do. I really think it's important that I um, keep myself open to being a creative and whatever that means. Um, I'm open to it. I'm, I am a fashion designer, but as I said, I'm a creative, I'm an artisan, and I like to combine them all together. Suzanne's just bringing some of my illustrations here to show you. So, I don't know if you can see oh, this, they're covered in plastic, so. Yeah. So I, I use old school techniques. I don't do anything, uh, there's, there's no digital enhancement in any of my work. I just do pure watercolor. So um, it's a dying art, unfortunately, because as oh, illustrators these days are uh, totally destroying the art by using so much more digital enhancement in their work. But yeah, for me, it's partly because I'm so technically inept, so I've had to stay quite uh, old school just purely for that reason, but also because I love it. I love, and I want to honor the old school art. Um, the main element in my uh, pieces is that I design my own textile. So one of the dresses that Suzanne is wearing, so I created all of these pieces. It's a collage, a celebration of roses, birds, butterflies, and we put a polka dot background to it. And this is also printed in Melbourne as well. So all my fabrics are printed locally. And I love, as I mentioned, I love being a creative and I love that my work is, and I hate using this, it's such a cliche term, but wearable art. And that's, I guess that, that's the best way to, that I can describe my work. It is wearable art um, because I have done everything from the textiles to the, the design elements. Um, this dress in particular is one of my latest ones and it's called the Accident in Paradise dress. It's just a really, it's a really flattering piece because it has four darts at the waist. So it subtly cinches in your waistline. It has a high neckline. It's a dolman sleeve, which is all one piece and it just comes out from the waist. And it's also mid-calf, so it's a really lovely length as well. Although I stand at 5'2", so it's a little bit longer on me than what it, it should be. Um, and as you can see, um, Suzanne's put together a really beautiful sash. Only Suzanne knows how well to do. <laughs> <laughs> Says Estelle, oh, and have a look at this. <laughs> So, but if I'm not designing fabrics, I have I work with local artists um, so that I can showcase their work as well. So there's this one here, which is the, well, we call it the vintage Phoenix print. Uh, local artist, and I really, for me, it's so important to not only showcase my own work but also to celebrate 
our local artisans. Um, and with every photo shoot that I do, I'm always using local creatives because we're a community and it's really important to be a voice for everyone. Um, and, you know, it's sad to say, but we are the minorities. And, but I believe that if we do stick together, we have a stronger voice. So um, I'm constantly speaking up for my, for my local creatives and always collaborating with them. Um, what else do I have? Oh, this is another recent piece. Oh I drew this piece, isn't it? With it also is. the, uh, the detail on the sleeve. So, so beautiful to to, uh, to print it on this on this dress, and it's the same cut as the one that Suzanne's wearing because it's such a flattering cut. So we did it in the black, as well as in the olive, with just a plain gold necklace. Mm. Yes, as well. So the other thing Estelle does that she'll tell you about is it's the same print that you can see here um, as in the dress, but this one's in a velvet, this skirt. Oh, wow. So beautiful. And there's also a matching skivvy that goes with it, but I'm not too sure where it is. Oh, I can see it over there. Um, so yes, that's the, the velvet skirt version. And it's quite luxurious to have it printed on velvet, if you can see that. So it actually has a really beautiful weight to it. And that's the matching skivvy that goes with it. Oh, that's amazing. As much as I, I really want to showcase the prints more than, I keep my designs quite, I don't want to say simple because there's a, there's a big process behind it. And it's not unusual for me to sample a, um, a design two or three times because I want to get the cut just right. So they're, they're not simple in, the process but simple in uh, silhouette because I do want to showcase the prints more so and for me as a designer I really believe that it's a, um, a great privilege to be in this position where I can give my wearer my, my clients the tools to interpret my pieces in a way that tells their story so I'm really mindful of that when I am designing. Was that uh, printed at next date? Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to share my whoever, you know, these, they're a small business and I'm happy to share where I get my, my pieces printed and manufactured as well because, uh, you know, if we can keep these businesses working and alive, I'm happy to, to share all the details. Only because we're, we're looking at getting some stuff printed there and I was interested to see how the, the colour saturation turned out on that velvet. Sorry. Oh. Um, yeah, well, I'll actually show you this one because if you want to see... Wait, colour, till, wait till you see this. this. <laughs> my favourite. Oh, so can oh. you see this? Oh, my God, look at that. That's <gasps> so beautiful. So look that skull wrote off. That's printed on velvet as well. So the colour saturation on that is so vibrant. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, I really highly suggest going yeah. with them. So what this one, this is going... I'm actually digressing a little bit and making totes velvet totes Ooh. and this will also be printed on a sweater as well uh shoal who is the owner is also a graphic designer so she's just fantastic in helping you with placement and uh, creating a repeat print as well which is you know if that's out of my my knowledge so i'm happy just to handball my work over and she does the rest do you mind passing that dress over this, I'm just going to show you another dress that was printed on velvet as well. But I really want to show you this particularly because it's also, a, it's a, once again, a celebration of another local artist. This is, um, can you see that print? So this is yep. from a local photographer, photographed her daughter underwater. So there's her, her arm. Oh yes. Can you see, yeah. Can you see that? Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just repeated the print. So when I do say it is wearable art, it really is. And that once again was printed at next stage as well. What else do I need to share with you? So I've really gone into um, collage now. 
Um, and so I'm doing a lot of things like this as well, which is like my bread and butter, printing on t-shirts, printing on long sleeve tops. And that sees me through uh, throughout the year. And also with the current landscape that we're finding ourselves in, I've had to create track suits. And you know what, <laughs> whatever, whatever works, whatever I have to do to adapt, and I'm so fine with that. So we did leopard track suits and with the necklace feature. So if you wanted to know, I got this printed at Print Locker. They're in, based in Alfington. So they're another great company. And we also did it in the leopard as well. And they sold really well. So you know what? It worked. Jazzing up, it's jazzing up your loungewear and I think it does so much to your state of mind and being stuck at home, unfortunately, it's still so vital that we get ourselves dressed up because um, it really does something. And even putting red lipstick on, something as simple as that does so much to your self-esteem and your sense of worth when you're bound at home, particularly with for me, being stuck at home with a four-year-old, I have to do whatever it takes to make myself feel alive. <laughs> um, now, I don't only just use my own uh, fabric prints, particularly because it is really costly. Um, and I am very mindful that there's people that can't afford to buy a dress for five, six hundred dollars. So I do offer more affordable pieces using still celebrating um gorgeous fabrics this is a a beautiful um jersey and it's once again a really gorgeous cut it's a raglan sleeve but what i've done is gathered both the front and the back it's got a, a gathered neckline a drop waist plus a feature hem frill Oh. This one is so has been really popular because it suits all body shapes. And when you're buying online, you do need to make it as as easy as as you can for for people to purchase. And I've done it in the plain black as well, wow. and then also in a a burgundy with a coral sleeve. What I like to do is just add a, a design twist with a really smarter red frill hem. Um, and then we've also got, so I do love using really gorgeous fabrics and it's very full and very voluminous and it comes with its own sash which you can tie around your waist or you can tie around your neck. Right. How are we going? No, we're going well. Have I still got you all? Are you all still yeah, with me? So when she does do a parade, what she often does is dresses the model on stage. And because she's so good at this layering, so what she will do is the model will come out in a basic piece and then Estelle will adorn them with millinery, earrings, and just layer them up so that people actually learn the art of Layering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's really important for people to understand, and this is what you all know how well to do, is to style. And as you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to do that. So when I do hold a presentation, um, one thing that I love to do is to style the model in front of my audience um, so that they get an insight as to how and why I put my outfits together um, and I really enjoy that I know that yeah it's um it's something that I yeah I love doing um, and also another thing that I love to do is showcase my work with dance hmm. uh, so I have dancers because as I mentioned earlier um, as creatives we all need to come together we are all under one umbrella so dancers musicians we're all one and the same and um so when i am showcasing my work i'm showcasing it in a very very abstract format so it's not your usual 
walking down the runway, which we see all the time. So I'm just trying to showcase it in, the, in a different way. Um, you look like you have a very beautiful salon there. Would you have made a lot of those uh, accessories as well? Oh, actually, I forgot to mention that I was a milliner for 15 years before I went back to fashion design. Um, I do have so something like that, oh. which is a highly decorated headpiece, but I do also showcase other creatives. So this is Millinery Jill. This is her work. Oh, oh, yeah, lovely. You yeah, and then also... Um, Sunglasses by Maud. So she's actually from Geelong and she uh, adorns all these beautiful sunglasses. And oh, yes, yes. She's fabulous. She really is fabulous. So when people come to my studio, they're not only, we do style. So they're not only trying on my own pieces, but we put it together with chill rosettes and sashes and sunglasses and headwear so that once again they're getting an insight as to how to accessorize how to create an entire outfit oh, yep. and mm. because i'm so mindful of uh, waste i don't really want to waste fabric as as designers don't so what i've created is cravats so this is what i i create out of excess stock excess fabric stock um, and also the uh, headbands as well which I don't have any here at the moment I've sold out of those so just try to keep waste as low as possible yeah. so earrings as well by local artists uh, yeah. oh yeah yeah. So it's certainly an adventure coming in here because there's just so much to see. Uh, on the okay. floor. Don't you want to just be down there? Don't you just want to be in that salon <laughs> with these two girls? And it's a really beautiful space. It's not very big, but it's so it's my little sanctuary. Um and it's right in the middle of Fitzroy, but it's so quiet, so you don't actually realise that you're in such a, a busy little uh hub. It's it's just it's lovely and cozy in here. So yes, I would love you all to visit. I just want to show you some other prints as well. This is the Kyoto print. Once again, that one's done on velvet. And this has been this is one of my uh, coats that I bring in every season. It's the Paloma swing coat. So it's tapered um, at the the body, and then it flares out, and it has the large voluminous sleeves. And then also a tailored blazer. So I worked with a local artist, which, and what she actually did was photograph trinkets and vintage brooches to create this print. And then I worked with my cousin, who is a tailor. My uncle was a tailor, so he was taught by his dad and made this gorgeous tailored blazer for me. With the lining. This is actually a what men's cut I, it's with men's wear and women's wear. So it's not unusual for me to wear my husband's clothes, <laughs> which much to his disappointment. Um, so yes, and he, my cousin will actually come to the studio and measure up my client to ensure that the blazer is made specifically to their waist measurements and size me measurements as well. Estelle, do you do you do work for costumes for theatre? Oh, actually, funny you should say that because I did work at the Melbourne Theatre Company for quite a while. But no, I wouldn't go back to costume design. Okay, it's very it's a lot of work. Um, no, I'm quite happy just to stay with with what I'm doing. And you know, having I'm, it's very sad to say, but yeah, just uh, it's a dying art, which is really sad and. Mm. Um, people are just not really understanding and appreciating the work that goes into making a headpiece. Yeah. And mm -hmm. go. Uh, do you have that beautiful gold drop waist pleated skirt or is that sold out? Is that, do you have that in the studio? Bronzy, like a bronzy metallic. I was like, um, oh. the one that was the, the top of under, I think. 
I, I only have the sample. I've got my, oh, I'll sorry. Go. And it has completely sold out, I'm afraid. Oh, it, that was so amazing. I, I missed out on that one. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, yes, I think it's this one here. Is it this one? Is it this one, Em? Was it that one? No, it no, it was the skirt with a drop waist. Oh, yes, no, I still have that. In, in like a coppery... Yeah, yeah, no, I still have that. Yeah. Yep, no, I can still make that for you. Righto. It's quite something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, how divine is this? Oh. You see the shimmy? Oh. And this one actually does have stretch in it, so it's super comfortable to wear. Nice. Yeah. So, yes, no, that is still available. Will it, will it fit a size 16? Everything is made custom, custom made. So if you provide us with your waist measurement, then we'll make it to your waist specifications. No problem. Beautiful. Here. Is it possible for us to watch you do a styling well, session? What I'm actually, one of the projects that I'm working on at the moment is because once again, having to adapt to our current landscape, I'm creating, I want to create a, an event where I am doing a live stream of a styling session. And I'm currently, um, in talks with a PR company in Paris so that we can get people interested in overseas as well. And if you can muster up and gather some, some of your friends, but yes, yeah, so that is a project that I am working on at the moment where we will be live streaming a, a styling session. First of all, I love yeah. that, um, uh, best, well, that casual zip up. Yes. Uh, that is divine. So it's, it's kind of, an O to a cheerleader print. Oh, that's fun. Yes, isn't that fun? Also in an oversized uh, sweater dress as well. Oh. It is a lot of fun. Yes. You know, there is an element of whims whimsical in my work. Yes. You know, I think it's all about having fun. That's the main thing and not to take it too seriously. It really is um, an expression of yourself and, you know, it says so much of who you are. So just show the the humor and the lighter side of of your personality personality and what you wear and lots of color for me that's really important mm -hmm. um what else is there it's a great opportunity for people to see something so different from the mainstream and if they haven't been introduced to you estelle then chances are they would never really know. They look at the magazines and think, oh, wow, you know, that looks different, that looks nice, but they don't even know how to do it themselves. So to actually have, you know, places that look like people like you, it would be a great opportunity just to just play, as you said, just to play and have some fun and really find what... I think it's a really wonderful time to be an independent designer because... You know, I've been in the industry for a very long time and I had two stores and I had, I, you know, I saw uh, when all the large conglomerates came, um, H&M, Zara, and I saw how it affected our local trade. Um, and I knew that our time would come. I just had to be patient. And I think now is our time. People are slowly being educated and they're understanding the importance of supporting local. Um, so yeah, the main, the main thing that we need is more exposure from media. I think that's the most important thing. And you know, all the magazines as well, I think they need to celebrate independent artisans. Um, because you're right, how else do they know about us? And uh, word of mouth is pretty much how we get, we get exposure and also social media. But yeah, media still needs to to tag along. I agree because um, it's all very well to say, well, look, you know, I can go to Bulgari, I can go to, you know, um, any of the high-end uh, labels and you can put together a great look. But what you see in the magazines sometimes are not always that wearable, but on the other hand, it's not affordable. It's not possible. It's not affordable. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. So you're a ray of sunshine on the on the fashion. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Thank you. Like I said, I've been doing it for a very long time. I've been in the industry, and my, you know, I, I'm in the. My dad 
my mum, my uncle, it, it's, in, it's in my blood and I've seen the changes. Um, and I also know the, the virtues of honouring the essence of, of the industry, honouring the essence of fashion design. Um, and also being respectful to my clients as well, making it um, not intimidating. What's that? Less intimidating, unintimidating. Um, and also myself as well, so that I'm approachable and that you can, my clients can come to me and I will help them in any way that I can and to show them how important it is to celebrate your own personality. You know, I'm almost on a, on a crusade to to showcase that how important it is to tell your story through the clothes you wear so yes um and this is another bomber so once again this is a, a collage that i created an mitv collage and i've got that on a little bomber jacket unfortunately the sad thing is my local guy who knitted my had my knitted my bands he had this very old knitting mill in uh just off sydney road he's no longer i can't, i don't know what's happened to him so unfortunately i need to find a new place where i can get bands made up so until then there won't be any mitv bands unfortunately um, which is yeah it's a bit sad that uh, the old knitting mills are slowly going Estelle, if somebody had an idea of a, of a pattern or a something that they wanted to put onto one of your t-shirts, uh, would you would you recreate or make their illustration better than they can describe it? In other words, they might draw it out briefly, but would you take that on and do that for them? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Happy to work with with anyone and create something very personal that's no problem at all because my pieces are custom made and also that my the printing we can get we can print up one t-shirt we can get one dress made up um so i'm happy to accommodate anyone and with whatever they want to create mm, lovely great good to yeah. know yeah yeah does anyone else have any questions for me Maybe no? Girls, this is your chance. Perhaps we need to have a little mini bus and we bring us all down to Melbourne <laughs> one weekend. I would love that. So where's everyone based? Are you most of you based in New South Wales? Quite yeah. a bar, yes. So uh, let's right. I'm just gonna put up the gallery view. Everybody I can see on here right now are in New South Wales. <laughs> okay, except us. So you definitely need a mini bus? And you all need to come and visit me. And we can just have some fun here. Let's I'll do have it. the champagne waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually thinking I'm going to have a talk with Suzanne and Emma. and We might just have to organise something just for us. It'll be fantastic. Well, you know what? We can even just have a, we can do a workshop as well. We can do a fashion illustration workshop. And... Um, make a day of it make it a real event yeah because um that's that's also something that i love to do um and i haven't had a workshop for a very long time so i'm certainly in need of of holding one so if you want to come down we can really make an event of it it'll be so much fun it's still one of the i really do find that melbourne has more um, choice and uh, interesting choices down in Melbourne. It really is the fashion um, city of Australia. It is. Sydney is not. And it's very hard for us up here to find something unusual and different for our clients. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to send samples up to you as well, particularly, you know, if you want to pass them on to other style consultants. Um, I'm happy to do that. So if you want it, you can give me a list of pieces that you want me to send up and I can do that for you. Suzanne, next time you're up here staying with moi, maybe yes. you just put a few things in the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely oh, do that. Thing, another thing that we can do is both of us fly up and if you want to create an event. Two suitcases. Yeah, two suitcases and we can, if you want to create an event with some of your clients so that they can take a look at um, my collections. 
then you know that's another another thing that we can consider i mean i'm all about personal service as all of you are so we can i'm happy to do that that would be so much fun well, i don't know if we've said we've talked about estelle but her label if you want to follow it on social media or look up anything it's mickey in the van m-i-c-k-y in the van yes. yeah. videos i would like to get everybody's uh, photo before they disappeared you ready Thank you. So I, I've put Estelle's um, Instagram link in the chat. Thank you, so, thank you so much. Thank you. I think we're good unless anybody's got any other questions. So yeah, as, as Estelle said, she does live illustrations as well. Um, and she does a lot of work with the Western. So she goes in normally cup time and does live illustrations at their cup carnival events of people. So there's always that angle too. Mm. Um, and then you were over in the Middle East last year to do live illustrations at a wedding in the Middle East. Oh, that was insane. <laughs> I, I wasn't allowed to talk about it back then, but it was for a royal wedding. Wow. And I was paid an, a ridiculous amount of money to fly over to um, Doha to do live illustrations at a wedding that I have never seen. <laughs> it's beyond words. It was, it was, yeah. So yeah, that was, that was very exciting. That would have been fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just want to say thank you. It's been a wonderful session. Totally thank enjoyable. You. Lovely thank to you. meet you. And I I look forward to meeting you in person. And look, we will talk about that trunk show, whether you come up here or whether we take our little mini bus down to Melbourne. But either well, we can way. do both. I mean, the mm. trunk show will be great because you know that you can bring your clients. Yes. there and uh, make a, a real event of it mm. and meeting the designer which I think is really important as well so mm. yeah we can certainly do both well thank you for your time Estelle thank you Suzanne for helping out there and thank you ladies for jumping on and letting me introduce you to my super clever oh, friend thank you. <laughs> thank, you. And thank you for organizing it and thank yeah. you all for staying with me i was hoping you would stay with me so thank you so much absolute pleasure we'll talk to you soon thank you Wonderful. bye bye now bye, -bye. bye.